Brilliance Audio presents A Book by Desi Arnaz, performed by Juan Pablo de Pachi. I was about to drive through the gate of one of the most famous motion picture studios in the world to co-star in a film. I had to pinch myself to believe it. I blew the horn, and a cop came out of the little glass-enclosed cage. A chain stretched across the entrance. The cop said, Yes, sir. I answered, Desi Arnaz from New York. I have an appointment here at 9.30. Take the chain down, please. I asked the people in the administration building how to get to casting, that I was Desi Arnaz reporting for too many girls. The girl said, Oh, fine, they're at the little theater. Mr. Abbott was already asking about you. She showed me the way to go, and I thanked her. All the kids were at the little theater. The only person who was not at the little theater was Lucille Ball, who was to play Marcy's part of the ingenue. I was doing She Could Shake the Maracas with the piano player when I saw this girl come in. She was dressed in a pair of tight-fitting beige slacks and a yellow sweater, with beautiful blonde hair and big blue eyes. I said to the piano player, Man, that is a hunk of woman. He answered, You met her today? No, I never met her. I've never seen her before. That's Lucille Ball, he said. That's Lucille Ball? She sure doesn't look anything like she did this morning. Hello, she said as she walked up to me. I asked, Miss Ball? Like I wasn't sure I had met her before. Why don't you call me Lucille? And I'll call you Dizzy. Okay, Lucille, but it's not Dizzy. Oh, how do you say it? Daisy? No, Daisy is a flower. It's Desi. Desi. The next few lines I used were the oldest in history and the corniest. Do you know how to rumba, Lucille? No, I've never learned. Would you like me to teach you how to rumba? Pretty impressive approach, huh? I don't know why she ever went out with me after that one. When we got married, nobody gave it more than two weeks. There were bets all over the country with astronomical odds against us. She was giving an interview to a lady magazine writer, and Lucy was telling her all the reasons why she and I should not get married. She was telling the writer that she had just come to New York to say hello and was promoting her picture, Dance Girl Dance. Also, she was glad that I was in New York at the same time. We would certainly see each other, but there was no way we were going to get married because of too many different difficulties between us. I had to live a certain kind of life on the road, nightclubs and theater work, and she was more or less committed to Hollywood. Finally, the lady left. We hadn't seen each other for a long time, so we kissed and we apologized for all the nasty things we had said to each other over the telephone. As I was leaving, I told Lucy, this girl is going to have a hell of a time with that story. Why? Because I have everything arranged to marry you tomorrow morning, if you would like to marry me. She said, where? In Connecticut, I answered. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. I want to marry you and I want to marry you tomorrow. Why couldn't we just live together, she asked. She was way ahead of her generation. I answered, no, I don't want to just live together. I want to marry you, and I want to have some children with you, and I want to have a home. I'm not like the image you have of me. Now, do you want to marry me or not? Now, of course I want to marry you, you idiot. But aren't we supposed to wait three days for a permit or something? I got the whole thing straightened out. I've already got a permit and the judge to give us an exemption. Well, how are we going to... Don't you have to work at the Roxy tomorrow? Yes, but my first show tomorrow is not until 11 o'clock. She asked, You mean we are going to drive over to Connecticut, get married and come back, then go to the Roxy to your dressing room for a honeymoon? That's it for a week or so. I knew when I met you things weren't going to be normal, she said. You love me, don't you? I love you very much. Well, I love you very much too. <laughs>